Namaskar dear students in the dental material section today we will discuss about gypsum products a very important topic for theory in dental materials for your spotters for practical viva that is the manipulation viva and a very important topic for the grand viva so let's begin gypsum gypsum was discovered by egyptians they called it gypsos which means chalk it is also called as a wonder mineral it is formed from the gypsum rock which is white in the pure form and it was introduced in dentistry by philips faf in 1756 gypsum products are supplied as fine powders when they are mixed with water they form a fluid mass it can be poured into the mold or the impression that we have obtained and then it is hardens and forms a rigid hard and a stable mass which is again calcium sulfate dihydrate uses of gypsum gypsum is used in medicine and pharmaceuticals then it is used to make statues and different decor items it is also used in building construction work and homes then its application in dentistry now if we talk about the uses of gypsum in dentistry first it is used to make cast and models cast and models are the positive replica of the oral soft and hard tissues of either maxillary or mandibular jaw what is the difference between the cast and model cast is the replica on which the restoration or the prosthesis is fabricated while a model is used to plan the treatment or to observe the treatment progress now it is also used to fabricate a dye dye is a positive dimensionally accurate replica of a prepared natural tooth which is used for making inlay crown or bridges then gypsum is also used in mounting mounting of the cast with the articulator it is used to make the mold material for processing of complete denture and also as an investment material besides gypsum is also used as a bite registration material classification of gypsum gypsum can be classified into five types according to the ada specification number 25 type 1 dental plaster impression it is used for making the impression it is a rigid inelastic material type 2 dental plaster model it is used for making study models and also for mounting type 3 dental stone model it has higher strength as compared to the type 2 it is used for making final cast type 4 it is the improved stone also called as die stone to prepare the dies it has high strength with low expansion type 5 dental stone with high strength and high expansion all the gypsum products are a result of heating the gypsum and driving off the part of water of crystallization this process is called as calcination now it depends how this calcination is done if it is done in a open kettle at 110 to 120 degree celsius it forms beta calcium sulfate hemihydrate that is model plaster and this process is called as dry calcination if the heating is done under steam and pressure at 125 degree celsius it forms dental stone that is alpha calcium sulfate hemihydrate and the third method is that the heating is done with the addition of 30% calcium chloride at 100 degree celsius it forms alpha calcium sulfate hemihydrate that is type 4 and type 5 high strength stone all the three are calcium sulfate hemihydrate now what is the difference if the calcination is done in a open kettle it forms irregular shaped crystals which are very porous and random shaped it forms two type of plaster type 1 and type 2 if the calcination is done under pressure it forms more uniform shaped crystals more dense than plaster larger crystals and smoother particles 
it forms dental stone that is type 3 and if it is done with calcium chloride then very dense crystals are formed which are cubic or rectangular in shape they are larger crystals and they mainly form two forms that is type 4 dental stone high strength and type 5 high strength with high expansion now what are the differences between the beta hemihydrate and the alpha hemihydrate beta hemihydrate is dental plaster and alpha hemihydrate is dental stone a favorite question of the examiner in the viva and also asked in the theory exam now beta hemihydrate that is dental plaster is formed from dry calcination as we saw so the crystals which are formed are porous and irregular with very low apparent density while the alpha hemihydrate is formed by the wet calcination under steam and pressure the crystals are prismatic and regular they have high apparent density the dental plaster it needs more water to mix so the water powder ratio is more the dental stone it needs less water water powder ratio will be less dental plaster has low strength and hardness so it is used for making the primary cast and the study model while the dental stone has high strength and hardness so it is used for making the final cast now the setting reaction what happens when the calcium sulfate hemihydrate is mixed with water as we usually do when any of the three types is mixed with water it takes up one and a half molecules of water that is it regains the water of crystallization and becomes calcium sulfate dihydrate and heat is liberated which is around 3900 calories so this makes the reaction exothermic the reaction is continuous and repeated until the hemihydrate is converted into dihydrate theories of setting reaction a very important theory question and also many times it is asked in viva there are three theories of setting reaction of gypsum first is the crystalline theory also called as dissolution precipitation theory second is the gel theory also called as colloidal theory and third is the hydration theory crystalline theory is the widely accepted theory which was proposed by lee chaclier and it is also called as dissolution precipitation theory it is based on the difference in the solubility of the hemihydrate and the dihydrate the solubility of hemihydrate is 0.9 while the solubility of dihydrate is 0.2 when the powder is mixed with the water it forms a suspension and when more of the powder particles it mix with the uh, solution it forms a saturated solution and finally a super saturated solution that means not more solute particles can be added to it and what happens then the dihydrate crystals start precipitating out as we can see in the picture and finally it forms a hard and rigid mass Then comes the gel theory or the colloidal theory. The proposers of this theory propose that when the powder is mixed with water, it forms a hemihydrate sol and then a dihydrate sol and finally a dihydrate gel, which is the set mass. But the set mass did not appear like a gel. So the theory was discarded. Hydration theory states that when the hemihydrate or the powder is mixed with water, it rehydrates the particles and the hydrogen bonding is seen between the sulfate groups and then it forms a hard and set mass. This theory was also not accepted. Now before we move to the manipulation, three times are important. First is the mixing time, second is the working time and third is the setting time. 
Mixing time is the time from the addition of powder to the water until the mixing is completed. If we are doing the hand spatulation, it will take 1 minute. If we are using a mechanical mixer, it will take 20 to 30 seconds. Second is the working time. Working time is the time available to use the workable mix. That is from the start of the mix to the point where the consistency is no longer for the use. Generally, it is 3 minutes, which is sufficient. Third is the setting time. That is the time elapses from the beginning of the mix until the material hardens. Two types of setting times are important. First is the initial setting time and second is the final setting time. Initial setting time is a time where the mix will reach a stage of firmness, which is represented by a semi-hard mix. That is no more workable, but it is not completely set. Second is the final setting time. That is the time required for the reaction to be completed. It is the time at which the material can be separated from the impression without any distortion or fracture. How to control the setting time or what are the factors that affect the setting time? First is the manufacturing process and the particles. Finer the particle size of the hemihydrate, faster the mix hardens and thus the setting time reduces. Second is mixing and speculation time. Longer and rapid mixing, it results in formation of more nuclei of crystallization. So it will shorter the setting time. Third is the water powder ratio. More the water used for the mixing, fewer nuclei will be available. So consequently, the setting time will be prolonged. It will be increased. Now, if we talk about the temperature, temperature produces two effects. One is change in the temperature. It causes the change in the solubility of the hemihydrate. So if there is uh, temperature is increasing, the solubility ratio of the hemihydrate to dihydrate, it decreases. So if it decreases, the setting reaction will slow down and the setting time will increase. On contrary, when the temperature is increased, there is increase in the mobility of the calcium and the sulfate ions, which results in increase in the rate of reaction and thus decrease in the setting time. Third, for last is the modifiers. Modifiers are the accelerators and the retarders, which are added to the gypsum to change its setting time. Modifiers. Modifiers can be accelerators and retarders. Accelerators are the chemicals which are added to decrease the setting time and retarders are the chemicals to increase the setting time. Accelerators used are sodium chloride 2%, potassium sulfate more than 2%, sodium sulfate 3 to 4%, Slurry water, which is a super saturated solution of gypsum, terra alba, again the gypsum particles. They act as sites for crystallization, thus fasten the reaction and decrease the setting time. Then comes the retarders. Retarders can be organic materials like glue, gelatin and gums. They act by forming an adsorbed layer on the hemihydrate to reduce the solubility and inhibit the growth of gypsum crystals. Then comes the salts like borax, potassium citrate, sodium chloride in excess amount. They form a layer of calcium salt that is less soluble as compared to the sulfate. Thus, they act as the retarders. Then comes the blood and the saliva on the impression surface. They they act as retarders. Not only the retarders, they also affect the surface details of the impression. So the impression surface need to be properly rinsed before being poured. Second comes the alginate. Alginate, if it is left over in the bowl, it acts as a retarder. So when we have to mix the stone, the bowl with remnant alginate should be cleaned properly. What is a balanced stone? Balanced stone is a stone when proper quantity of both retarders and accelerators are added to achieve a desirable setting time. That is called as a balanced stone. So these are a few viva questions which are often asked by the examiner. 
Tests for setting of the gypsum products. How to check whether the material is set or not and whether we can use it or not. First is the loss of gloss test. This is the first test which is used to check the initial set of the gypsum. When the set plaster, it loses the water on its surface and smoothness. It is considered as the end of the working time and the initial set has taken place. This is called as the loss of gloss test. Second is the penetrometer test, which is the Gilmore test and the Wicat test. Gilmore uh, test has two needles, small and the large. The small needle has the weight of around 1 by 4 pounds. The diameter is 1 by 12 inches. The large one is the weight is 1 pound and the diameter is 1 by 24 inches. So the smaller one it checks the initial setting time and the larger one it checks the final setting time. How these penetrometer tests work? If the needle it penetrates the mix that means the material is unset and if it does not that means the material is set. Then we have the wicket test for checking the setting time. The wicket needle it weighs around 300 grams and the diameter is 1 millimeter of the needle. But we follow the ready for use criterion. What is that ready for use criterion? Technically material may be considered ready for use if it has attained a compressive strength of 80% which is usually attained at one hour. But most of the products which we are using they attain the ready for use state in 30 minutes and after that we can retrieve the cast from the impression. Water powder ratio. The proportion of the water to the powder used to make a workable mix of a particular gypsum product is called as the water powder ratio. For type 1 impression plaster, it is 0.50 to 0.75. Type 2 dental plaster 0.45 to 0.50. Type 3 dental stone 0.28 to 0.30. Type 4 improved or die stone 0.22 to 0.24. Type 5 high strength with high expansion the water powder ratio is 0.18 to 0.22. What does this actually means? For example, for the average mix of dental plaster that is type 2, it is 0.45 to 0.50. It means that 45 to 50 ml of water is needed for 100 grams of powder. For example, for the dental stone, it is 0.28 to 0.30. So this means that 28 to 30 ml of water is needed for 100 grams of powder. And as we can see in the table, the water powder ratio is decreasing from type 1 to type 5. Mixing of the plaster, stone or any gypsum product is relatively simple. It requires a stiff blade mixing spatula, a mixing bowl, room temperature water and the gypsum product. The water powder ratio should be cautiously taken for optimum properties that can be obtained. To start with the hand mixing, first we take measured water into the mixing bowl and then we sprinkle the powder on the water. This is called as sifting. Once the powder is soaked in water, we start with a mix. The mix should be smooth, homogeneous, workable and free of air bubbles. We can use a dental vibrator that will reduce the bubbles in the mix. While pouring the impression or mold, we slightly tilt the impression on one side so that the bubbles can be avoided. We can also keep the impression on the vibrator again to avoid the air bubbles. Mixing can also be done mechanically with a vacuum mixing. This provides a gypsum mix which is free of air bubbles and is homogeneous in consistency. This is mainly used when the elimination of voids and bubble is critical. Setting expansion. Setting expansion is the outward thrust of the growing crystals. It may range from 0.06% to 0.5%. It is maximum in the dental plaster and least in the high strength stone.
Let us understand the process of setting expansion. It is can be divided into five stages. First is the initial mix, then is the initial crystal growth, third is the solid phase contact, fourth is expansion and fifth is the termination. In the normal setting expansion in the stage 1 and stage 2, the particles are growing and they are surrounded by water. In the stage 3, the water around the particles is reduced, so the growth of the crystal is also limited. In the stage 4 and 5, we can see a more marked effect when the intermeshed crystals, they prevent the expansion in the normal setting. While in the hygroscopic setting, the crystals are always surrounded by water. They are hydrated and replenished with water. So the distance between the particles remain the same and the expansion is much more as compared to the normal setting expansion. The expansion in hygroscopic setting is more than twice as compared to the normal setting expansion. Now the factors that control the setting expansion. First is the water powder ratio. At higher water powder ratio, fewer nuclei of crystallization will be present per unit volume. So that will lower the setting expansion. Modifiers, they always reduce the setting expansion. For example, potassium sulfate 4% solution, it will decrease the setting expansion from 0 0.5 to 0.06%. Sodium chloride and borax, they also reduce the setting expansion. Strength. The strength of the gypsum is usually measured in the compressive strength. Plaster is weakest in the strength with improved stone being the strongest and the dental stone which is intermediate between the two. If we see the 1 hour compressive strength, plaster has 9 megapascal, dental stone 21 megapascal and dye stone 34 megapascal. Two types of strength can be recognized. First is the wet strength which is also called as the green strength and second is the dry strength. The wet strength is the strength when water in excess which is required for the hydration remains in the test specimen. When such water is removed by drying, the strength which is obtained is called as the dry strength. The dry strength may be two or more times as high as the wet strength. Factors that affect the strength of the gypsum. First is the water powder ratio. As the water powder ratio increases, that means we are increasing the water, the porosity will increase and the strength will decrease. Second is the speculation. If the speculation is within one minute, which is optimum, it will add to the strength. But if there is over mixing that is beyond that, it will result in the break of the crystals and there will be decrease in the strength. Then addition of accelerators or retarders, any additives, they decrease the strength because they act as impurities of the mix. To reduce the chances of cross infection, infection control is must. We prefer the disinfection of the impression. Along with, we disinfect the cast. We can disinfect it first to spray with iodophore or chlorine product. Then we rinse it. Or we can use 0.5% of sodium hypochlorite, soak the cast for 30 minutes along with the saturated calcium sulfate dihydrate solution because the gypsum is soluble in water, so the surface hardness is not lost. So that's all for today. Please like and share the video. You can give your topics in the comment section. Do subscribe for more learning. Wish you success.